Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all well. Yes? Are you all blessed? Yes. Well, if you don't know it, you are. Thank you for that prayer, but just to help me to get in, Lord, we continue to pray that your spirit will rest upon each one of us, that uh, your living presence will be tangible amongst us, that we will know your divine grace, that we will know your divine healing, that we will know your divine provision and guidance as a fellowship and as individuals. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, um, it's entitled, Every Member Maturing. Every Member Maturing. And uh, these are one of the features of our small groups, our cell groups. And uh, the prototype cell group that we're involved in, this is one of the elements that we, or any leader or any group, has to look out for. That every member within the group is maturing. Uh, one of the first things that we preached on was Christ at the centre, being aware that Christ is at the centre. Whether in a small group or whether in church, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for Christ to be at the centre. We're looking for the presence of Christ. We're looking for Christ to be active amongst us. We're not looking just for a meeting. We're not just looking to set up a project. We're looking to meet with Christ. And within the uh, new groups that we'll be setting up, the, today's subject is no less important, and it's where we are looking for ever, every member to be maturing. This year I've been fascinated um, by the exploits of Carolyn. Where is she? Oh, she's run away. Uh, she has been uh, in the kitchen, in the kitchen she's been experimenting and uh, we have a little area in the kitchen where there are plants that have been given to us and there have been plants that have been uh, developed and uh, Carolyn took her an apple core and she put it in some soil and blown me down, a little tree started to grow and then she broke it off and she's got one part in the garden, one part in the, in the house when we've been watching them uh, very closely. Then there was the pepper. She took some pepper or the core, stuck it in some soil and blow me down. These pepper uh, uh, plants started growing. And after, I've just been, and then we've got these little peppers that started appearing. And uh, I must be getting old because I'm getting a bit soft and I'm into gardening now and uh, you know, I, mean, I just appreciate things growing and flowers and I can't believe I'm saying this because if I was age 20, that would be the last thing that was on my mind. But uh, I just love the way that things grow and how um, when you plant something, it doesn't, if you plant a particular flower or a particular pl uh, plant, it doesn't become something else. It can only become what it is. Is that right? A plant can only become what it is. The DNA within it is what comes forward. And the church has its own characteristics also. It has its own DNA. And that DNA is within each one of us. That DNA is within each one of us. There is a seed of Christ that has been planted in your heart, in your, this being. And it's there, and it wants to become what it is supposed to be. It wants to become ever more expressing Christ. And that is the supernatural power that exists within us, that changes us. This Christ that we know is supernatural. This Christ we know is true. Christ is holy. Christ is God. Christ is captain. Christ is the author and perfecter of our faith. He is our saviour and he is the judge of all. That is the life, the power that lives within you. Amen? Oh, you're not really excited, are you? I'm excited. <laughs> this is a supernatural. Forget about supernatural on TV. You've got it present within you. Amen? Amen. Oh, sad work, Andrew. <laughs> 
Let's read Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 to 14, and it reads, But that, but what things were gained to me, these I count for loss. Yet, indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I might gain Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to death, sorry, to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already attained or already or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that of which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting these things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal for the prize of upward call, of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Here we have Paul. He has the DNA of Christ. And what he has done, he has taken hold of Christ and he is running with all that Christ is to him and he sees that which is ahead, that there is more that Christ has for him. There is a heaven, there are goals, there is a ministry, there is a maturing that needs to take place in his life. And so, if every member is to mature, the first thing we have to do, or the first challenge that we have is that we need to take hold of Christ. Take hold of the seed of Christ and allow it to be birthed within us. The challenge stands, will you consider Christ and accept Jesus? Will you do away with your old life and accept the new life, the new birth, that new seed within you? I have two phones, very quickly. This is a Samsung. Um, it's my old phone, it's an uh, Android, the software on it is Android or whatever the uh, terminology, but it's uh, the software is Android and this is a new phone, this is an Apple phone, this is run by what they call called iOS software or technology, I don't know. All I know is that they are not compatible, that the apps you get on this one, the apps you get, you try and put them, some of them you try and um, combine them or use them on each other, they don't work, they are different. And you know what, I've had this Samsung, this Android for many a years, and my boys, they've all had iPhones, they love iPhones, I will live by my iPhone, believe my iPhone, you know, it was like, that's what, sorry, that's the iPhone, that's what they hold on to. And they kept on saying to me, Dad, change, change. And I said, no, I like my Samsung, I like my Android phone. And um, I would look, to, every time there was a, an update, I would think, shall I go for it, shall I go for it? And I thought, no, I'm going to stick with my, stick with the Samsung, because that's what I know. It's good enough. Why do I need to change? Why do I need to change? You see, there are obstacles to me changing. And there are obstacles to us embracing all that Christ has for us. There's obstacles to us taking hold of Christ. What are those things? It's habits. It's patterns of life. Things, of, ways of being that we're used to. Sins that hinder. You know, uh, we've asked God to forgive us our sins, but sometimes we go back and we remind ourselves of those sins. And we find ourselves easily entangled. Maybe we don't accept Christ because there is a fear of the unknown. We're not too sure what this new DNA will do to us. Or maybe we just have a wrong perception of the future. A wrong perception of the future. What it is to be fully engaged with Christ. In the church, we can dwell and hold on to the past. We can dwell and say, well, that's what we used to do. That's what we used to to be. 
There is a warning, behold of holding on to our old ways in our own strength. Because what happens there is we can become stagnant and we can lose the way. You know, God is always moving. God is always moving. And as a church, we need to be hearing what he's saying. We need to be saying, where is God? Where is he leading us? Because if we don't, we get left behind. And we won't be moving and talking and thinking and reflecting in the strength of God. We'll be doing it in our own strength. And then we end up having an appearance of church and not actually being fully alive to all that God has for us. So successfully taking hold of Christ. Successfully taking hold of Christ. What we need to do is to see Jesus as our goal, as our Lord, as our captain. We need to see this new life of being a Christian as the goal and the trophy. We need to be fully committed and we need to be single-minded. And so, there's always a challenge. I could have held on to my Samsung and so long as I hold on to that, I'll never be able to have this phone in that hand. Why? Because my old life, my old thinking, my old ways is firmly gripped. But if I want to take hold of Christ, I've got to try the old phone. And I've got to be willing to take hold of the new iPhone, the new life, the new technology, the new thinking, and say, I'm going to expose myself to this new way, to this new, this new truth, this new experience, this new DNA. I need, I need to allow it to, I need to digest it and allow it to be reflected in my life. This is the DNA of our mission, to see, especially the leaders, Andrew and myself and deacons and group leaders, this is the mission that we have, to see people, every member maturing, taking hold of Christ fully, forgetting the past and taking on the new. Hence, there is a need that each one of us who leads needs to be able to handle the word of God well. We need to be in the scriptures. We need to see what the truth is and all that Christ has for us. In the scripture, we sit in, the, in verse uh, 12 and 14, I'd say in ending now, because I also have a new practice which I have to make my sermon, sermon shorter. Oh, this is hard work. <laughs> Not that I have already attained or already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize up the, of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So what are we left with? If we want to be members that are maturing, then we need to take hold of Christ and all that he teaches with both hands. Remember, you can't drive forward looking back. You can't do it. You're going to crash. There's going to be an incident. So the DNA of our church is summed up in this chorus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. Father God, help each and every one of us to embrace you with both arms with all of our lives, to forget the past, to seek to mature, to be your subjects. Help us to consider and accept you wholly. May you, Lord Jesus, be our goal and our prize. In Jesus' name, amen.